Hi, I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how I play the song Fire and Rain by James Taylor. I have put together a slightly simplified arrangement that will hopefully make the chord fingerings and finger picking a little easier for you to learn. You can follow along with free guitar tab. To access it, just go to the link in the video description. It'll take you to my website where you will see links to chord charts, guitar tab, a Guitar Pro 6 file, and there's also additional details about the song. Before we get into the actual finger style arrangement that I put together, I want to show you how you could strum this song using its basic chords. I also want to talk a little bit about the chord progression. <clears throat> so first things first, this song is played with a capo at the third fret, but in order to eliminate some confusion and just keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and refer to the, uh, uh, the chord shapes by their names in the open position. So this song centers around an A major chord shape. And there are different fingerings for it. You can use whatever you're uh, comfortable with. There's some embellishments we're going to throw in here in a minute, and that may um, help you determine what type of fingering uh, is best. The intro and the verse are both based on the same chord changes, and they are A, um, a G slash E, which is actually related to an E minor 7. So I'm just going to call it E minor 7. D, and then back to A. And you could strum it like this. And you could put in some embellishments by uh, removing the fretted note on the second string so that your, that your A major becomes an A sus2. Continuing with the same part, the next chord changes are A, E major, and a G major 7. That's, and then I'm muting. So you could actually play, uh, strum the verses and, uh, uh, and just use these basic chords without any finger picking. So, just yesterday morning, they let me know. Okay, so that's your verse, and the uh, next part to learn is the chorus, <clears throat> which starts on D, and it goes like this. So you've got a D, then you have a D slash C sharp. Remember, we're thinking of the notes as if we were in the open position without the capo. So D, D slash C sharp. B minor 7, then a B minor 7 slash E. So it's and if you want those alternate bass notes you could actually just kind of pluck them individually instead of trying to strum them together with the chords. So you can do something like you know Then you have an A. And I like to put the little embellishment uh, there again. Notice that comes in at an upstroke as I play it, if you want to play it the way that I'm playing it. So uh, again, this is the chorus, right? So I've seen fun, I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. Keeps going. And then the 
next part. But I always thought that I'd see you again. All right, so uh, that last part is a G. And I actually just uh, play it to the second string. And then a D slash F sharp. Again, I strum only to the second string. And I'm using this form of E minor 7. Again, only strumming to the second string. So it's... And then it goes to an A9, no third. That's what we're calling that. And from here you just then complete the rest of the A chord. So. In some versions, I think uh, James went to just a regular A sus2. So you can go to an A sus2 or a regular um, or a full A chord. So let me back up a little bit. And let me talk about that, um, those accents and that pattern there. What you're doing is you're, you're, you're continuously strumming 16th notes, and then you're accenting some of them by hitting them a little bit harder. And you'll hear that there are some variations um, in the actual recording, so this is how I do it, and I do it this way each time. I don't really put any variation um, from chorus to chorus. And uh, those accents are down up, and then you play down up, down up without accenting, then accent down up, then play down up, down up without accenting, then accent down up, and then you only have two uh, strokes left to complete the uh, measure, so it's just simply down up, and then the pattern repeats. So it's Then you add your fingers for the A chord and you do the same pattern again. From there, you just repeat verse, chorus, verse, chorus into the song until the song ends. And for the intro, you could just simply strum through the uh, verse once, you know. Singing, right? Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. And so on. Before we move on to the actual fingerstyle arrangement of the song, let me talk a little bit about where these chords come from and uh, why these chord progressions work. So again, uh, we're pretending that we don't have the capo and that we're just in the regular open position. I'm going to refer to the notes uh, that way. So. You might figure out that A, D, and E major are related. They go together in the A major scale. They are chords 1, 4, and 5. But the uh, E minor 7 and the G chord might be throwing you off because they are not in the A major scale. So the question becomes, why did these chords work together, and where do they come from, and what key, what key uh, do you call this? Well, this song is actually drawing notes and chords from two different scales. It's drawing from the A major scale, like I just explained, but it's also drawing from the A mixolydian scale, or, which is the uh, fifth mode of the D major scale. Uh, now, the uh, D major scale has an e minor, e minor in it, that would be the two chord, and it has a G in it, it would be the four chord. And the fifth mode of the uh, D major scale would be um, A mixolydian mode. That's, that means that you, you use notes and chords from the D major scale, but you center on the fifth degree A, making uh, mixolydian mode. So, and it's a very common composition technique to mix um, chords from different scales when you're in a major key. 
uh, it's very common to mix notes and chords from the major scale and then notes and chords from the uh, a parallel scale. That means a scale that starts on the same tonic pitch. So in this case, you're mixing A major scale and the A mixolydian scale. And the difference is um, a G sharp and G natural, and that's the difference between an E major chord with a G sharp and an E minor chord with a G natural, and that's where the G chord comes in as well. So, uh, you would, because the primary chord in the music, throughout all the music, is A, that's always the home base, that's where everything comes back to and resolves, we say that this song is in the key of A. And if you want to number the chord progressions, um, A would be chord one, the E would be chord five, in some, some cases it's minor, in some cases it is uh, major, the D is chord four, and then when you get to the G, uh, the G is actually a flat seven chord. That's, that's its intervallic relationship to A. A to G is a flat seven. So you'd call that a flat seven chord. Now in the chorus, you also have a B minor seven. You can call that the two chord. So that's a little bit of the theory behind um, uh, this, this composition. If you want to learn more um, about chord progressions and playing by numbers, and if you want to learn more about this technique of mixing notes and chords from parallel scales, which by the way is called modal mixture or modal interchange, uh, see my fretboard theory series or my book Guitar Theory for Dummies. Okay, so now we're ready to play the actual fingerstyle arrangement. So with tab in front of you, here we go. All right, let me point out a few things. Um, you'll notice that I'm wearing a thumb pick. Uh, you could play this song with or without a thumb pick. Some people like to put uh, finger picks on their fingers. I've grown my nails out a little bit. Um, I, uh, most of the time when I finger pick, I'll play without a thumb pick. But in some cases, I like it just because I can get um, a, a, a cleaner, harder attack on the string. And I also like that with a thumb pick, uh, because I'm picking with the side of my thumb, I, I am able to lay the, uh, the, the side of my hand on the strings to dampen and mute and keep, uh, keep my playing clean as I move from chord to chord. Okay, well we already talked about the chord progression. So you know that it goes to A and then uh, E minor 7, or you could also call it a G slash E. Uh, the notes are related here. Now when you finger pick it, instead of playing A here in the open position, you're going to move up and play a bar chord. Uh, technically this is C um, uh, in the eighth position here. And you're just going to play the first three strings like this. So your thumb's going to hit the A, and then uh, you're going to fret this, and then your fingers get the rest of it like this. And remember, my version is simplified from the original recording. I have intentionally left um, some of the sliding, some of the embellishments out. I have intentionally simplified some of the, the finger picking to make it easier for you to learn. When After you learn my version, if you want to take a look at the original recording and, uh, and add some things in, you can do that. All right, so here it is from the beginning, slowed down. Then here's your next shape. This is called G slash E. same pattern there. And then you go to a D chord. Here's a little hammering on. I did leave some embellishments in there because I feel like they are, um, are important to the song. So, so what I felt were the necessary signature licks I left in. And this is one of them. So on that D, you're hammering on uh, the note on, on the first string. And I mentioned that I simplified the finger picking. Um, there's a variety of some t techniques used uh, in the original recording, and I'm, I'm trying to simplify it. And one of the things that I did is tried to keep most of the chords thumb and then three fingers in a bunch, just to keep it easy. All right, so on that D, 
thumb, and then three fingers, and a bunch, strings one, two, three. And then you go to the A chord. Instead of fingering a full A and adding this embellishment, especially this part, I think it's much easier to just omit the fourth string. Don't pick it, don't fret it, and just fret the notes from the A chord on strings two and three. It'll make, it'll make the uh, embellishments coming up here a lot easier. So, and then you, ha you hammer into the second string right when you go to the A, and your thumb is on the A string. So, fingers in a bunch, strings one, two, three, thumb on your root A from the D chord. And that A chord uh, actually comes in on the upbeat. So it's one, two, three, four. Comes in a little earlier. Uh, it's syncopated. It comes in a little earlier than you uh, would expect. Okay, after this hammer-on, you have uh, another signature lick. I have simplified it to make it easier, but I still think that it sounds recognizable. And you're going to play it like this. And here's why I think it works better to omit the fourth string. So I like to do this fret the A chord with these two fingers, and then I use my third finger here to add on. It's like an A suspended, then back to the A. And you're going to pull off the second string. So it's. Then your thumb hits the root A, and then you pluck the chord again and hammer on. So it's let me back up. That last lick uh, it, where you go to the suspension comes in right on beat four. So it's one, two, three, Four. And that last hammer on then is beat one of the next measure. Okay, next um, you have some alternating between your fingers, still in a bunch, and your thumb uh, on root notes. So you have the chord A. Then you go to an E chord. Um, you don't really need to fret these notes because you're not using them. You're just using the first three strings with your fingers and your thumbs on E here. So let me back up. And um, that the first time that you that you uh, pluck the A chord is actually the end of that signature lick that comes before it, and you're actually hammering into it. So it's Let me do that again. So as soon as you play that last hammer on on beat one, that's the end of that signature lick, that's the beginning of you alternating your fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb. And as you follow me here, it's a good idea to pause the video and go back, uh, look at the tab if you need to, and rehearse putting these parts um, together. If you need to spend several minutes, if you need to spend an hour just rehearsing this first part, that's fine. You might spend um, a lot of time just doing the... in order to get that technique down. Take as much time as you need. When you're ready to move on, uh, the next part of the progression goes to G and sounds like this. So uh, this is G major 7. I'm not fretting or playing the fifth string. And let me uh, slow the pattern down for you. Whoops. Rather than trying to do the whole thing, um, let's kind of break it up into pieces. So, first part, um, that's, the, that's string six, four, three, two. 
and I'm plucking it thumb, index, middle, ring finger. Um, after that, you go back to your thumb on the sixth string and then your first finger on the fourth string. So it's... Put it all together, no break. We keep going. Uh, the next part is thumb again and then the first string. So... And we do it again, no break. In fact, at this point now, you're just going to be alternating between a thumb and finger. So it's thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger. At the very end, your fingers play twice. So, all right, we've got... And then thumb again and the second string, and then thumb again, and the third string. And then thumb again, and then here's where your fingers play twice, strings two and three. It's not necessary that you follow my, my right hand fingering exactly. Um, if there's some variation that you like better, you know, you might, maybe you like just using a thumb and two fingers. You might do something like, you know. Work it out in whatever way um, is most comfortable for you. If you would like to practice the whole intro from the beginning with me, you can do it now, slowly. Let me count you off. One. Two, three, four. All right, so next the verse starts, and the verse is almost the same as the intro. Uh, there's just a few little changes. So, the finger picking in the verse uh, changes a little bit in the original recording. But in order to make this easier for you to learn and follow, I'm going to have you play the very same finger pattern in the verses. So you can start your verses out the same as the intro. And when you get to the D chord, instead of doing the embellishment, which you hear in the intro, you can actually just repeat the same finger pattern from the previous chord shapes. It looks like this. So from the beginning. And then you go to A. Now in the intro, the A comes in on the upbeat. Remember that? But in the verses, uh, the A comes in right on the beat. So it's, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, one, right in the beat. And then I do like to put in an embellishment here. There's a break in the, in the singing right there, and James Taylor always puts in some sort of embellishment there. He changes it uh, verse to verse. Um, I'm going to have you play the same embellishment again just to keep it easier, and it sounds like this. Those hammer-ons come, uh, they, they start before beat four so that you land on your target note on beat four, and then they start before beat one of the next measure so that you land on your target note on beat one. So let me back up a little bit because D is the beginning of this measure. So it's you know, one, two, three, four, and then one, next measure. So one, You can also put in um, a bass note with your thumb, like this. Let me back up from the D chord. And 
and after that last hammer on, everything's the same. Uh, it's just like the intro from there on out. Um, and that last hammer on is where you are alternating between your fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb for the E to, for the A to the E chord change, like this. And then into the G. So let me back up and play now uh, the verse as I do it um, from the beginning. And then it repeats. And that's how I do all the verses. Again, in the original recording, the verses vary. And that's one of the things that makes the original recording hard to learn and hard to follow because there's so much variation. So when I put this lesson together, I wanted to find a way where you could keep the uh, signature parts but make it easier to learn and easier to follow. So you can play all the verses like that. So next, we're going to take a look at the chorus. And uh, it looks and sounds like this. goes on but let me just show you this part here. So you're starting on D and I'm just plucking everything in a bunch there and then I reach to the C sharp just pluck that with my thumb and then B minor 7 if you want to simplify this you know because you don't need the fourth string your fingers are in a bunch and they're still on strings 1, 2, and 3 you could go if you want to reach here and just grab the B with your thumb or do something like this um, or maybe simplify it and just do strings five three and two that's fine but I do it like this D C sharp B minor seven E and then A and I just pluck the root A with my thumb Alright, and with that little embellishment there, um, you've got A and beat 1. Your hammer-on is going to end on beat 2. Then you take your finger back off, pluck those notes, pluck them again and hammer-on with your hammer-on ending on beat 3. So it's 1, 2, 3. And you can put the thumb in between like this. do that again. And after that, I like to just put in an extra just to fill the space. So it's Let me back up. I just realized I put in an extra bass note in there as well. Um, you can do that if you want. So you do this three times. And those chord changes are G, D slash, F sharp, E minor 7, and I'm only plucking strings 6, 4, 3, 2. So it's, so I only fret those notes. G, D slash, F sharp, E minor 7. And that E minor 7 gets held for an extra beat, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you have the uh, part that you have to strum. You can use your index finger for this. Or you could use your thumb pick or your thumb or however you're comfortable strumming. And I already talked about that strum pattern earlier when I showed you how you could just strum this, the basic chords of this song with a pick. So go back and review that section if you need to. 
And after you complete that part, you have now the basic parts and you can actually piece together the whole song. So the intro um, is just a little bit different. You got some embellishments on the D, the A comes in on the uh, upbeat, um, comes in a little early, it's a little syncopated, and there's an embellishment um, on that. When you begin the verse, you can actually play it almost the same as the intro. You just take away some of the embellishment on the D. Uh, you go to the A right on the beat. Um, you embellish a little bit differently uh, in the verses. And then you get to the chorus, which I just showed you, and then you can just repeat that. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and you can put together the whole song. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, there is more going on in the original recording. And uh, James Taylor often does uh, even more. Uh, he varies his parts even more so in, uh, in his live versions. And there's even a video of him teaching this song himself. Uh, and and his, that particular performance varies from the original recording and from other performances I've seen. So um, I'm not sure that James uh, plays this song the same way twice, but it's always very similar. And uh, part of his style is that constant variation. So I've simplified this in order to make it easier for you to learn. And this is a great place to start. And if you would like to know how the original recording was played, or you'd like to see James himself play this, I have included uh, links to the official sheet music at musicnotes.com and uh, James's own YouTube video of this song. Again, just follow the link in the video description uh, to see these things other details about the song and the uh, chord charts and the free tab that I give away. If you would like to play along with me and practice uh, what you've learned, you can do so now. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I'll kind of half sing us through some of the parts and I'm going to take you through the intro and I'm going to take you through the verse uh, and the chorus and then we'll just get started with the, the verse again just so you get a feel for how it repeats and then I'll stop and you can continue to play. So. From the beginning, here we go. One, two, three, four. Here's the verse. Just yesterday morning, they let me know. I walked out this morning and I wrote down this song. Chorus. All right, and then you repeat right there. And by the way, I want to point out, um, with some parts, like the end of the uh, intro or the end of the chorus, you might want to cut it off a little short so you can hop back into position uh, to begin the verse again. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. I'm Desi Serna. If you'd like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, and more, then see my fretboard theory book and DVDs, or my book, Guitar Theory for Dummies. You can also see my book, Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies, to learn how you can improve your sense of timing and hone your chops. Well, thanks again for watching, and be sure to click like on this video, leave me some positive comments, and subscribe to my channel. I want you to know the type of sacrifices I make in order to uh, bring these videos to you. 
I broke a nail during that performance. It's all just part of the risks of playing guitar, I guess.